you know, championships, so it's always important uh, for us to go out and compete at the highest levels and win. Uh, I think that's why we do the sport, to, to, to win. And so uh, what we do as a staff, which our staff has been working really hard, is to uh, put the kids in a position to, to, to win and be successful. Um, and so as far as the importance of it, I'd rank it the number one priority on our list this weekend. What are your expectations for each side, both men and rankings wise? Yeah, um, I want to say, what are the women ranked second and the men ranked uh, fifth? Um, you know, if we, if we, uh, if we obtain those rankings there, I think it'd be a successful weekend. But uh, you and I both know that uh, rankings don't don't mean a lot. Um, so we go there and run the race. So our expectations is just like I was telling Kim, is to, to go out there and win and put the kids in a position to be successful. Uh, if that turns out to be a W at the end of the day, we'll take it. Correct me if I'm wrong, if you took MPS up sort of low key, were there kids that you were resting specifically for nationals? Absolutely. Um, if you see, we didn't really double anybody. Um, English ran her second 60, so that's probably the only reason why she ran a 60-meter uh, dash there, um, already having a time. Um, Jenna probably needed a chance to go and improve her time there in the 60, and Phyllis, um, she needed to improve her time in the quarter, so that's probably why those, those girls were in those open events. Um, we didn't run them in the 200, or we didn't run them in the, uh, no, no doubles there, no, no hard doubles, so basically just either a rush buster or improve or mark that. Mike Berry, of course, uh, another guy there that, that ran, um, didn't quite do what he needed to do there at the MPSF, but had to go back again uh, to the last chance uh, qualifier there, he, he did well there. So um, that's kind of what we use the MPSF for as a chance for us to go there and, of course, be in a championship-like situation um, where points are, are awarded, um, but also to get as many kids used to qualify for NCAAs. How would you grade the team health-wise going into the Nationals? Uh, I'd say we're pretty healthy. Um, everybody that's supposed to be there is going to be there. Um, of course, the big thing when you talk about health-wise, uh, Mac Fleet, you know, how, how great is that for that kid to, to go up to Notre Dame and run 358, a uh, second off of his uh, PR from two years ago. So he's definitely, um, we think that he's going to be, and we won't know that officially till uh, 5 o'clock, but I want to say he's 17 or 18 there on the descending order list. Any specific strategy as far as spreading your athletes across all the events that you're considering on no, this one? No, um, pretty much, uh, once again, we'll go with the theme of just putting them in a position to be uh, successful. Um, and, you know, they are who they are. They're going to run the events that they're supposed to run. Um, Jordan will be uh, potentially run the DMR, the three and the five. Um, so basically just whatever, whatever they're qualified in is, is what they'll do. How much is your role different this year um, uh, than the past, past? Lots of lots of meeting and talking with you guys. I don't think I've talked this much uh, in my eight years here, or my seven years here, this being the eighth. Um, so that's the, the biggest change is all the little mundane, mundane things that usually I probably knew about but didn't care about or didn't have any interest in, in worrying about. Um, now you get everything cast at your feet, good, bad, or indifferent, you're responsible. So I'd probably say that's the biggest difference as far as my role. But um, we have a good staff. Our, our operations people are absolutely outstanding, and, and Julian Steele and, and Matt Downs. So they kind of allow me to continue to be with the kids, which is I think is what I'm good at. What are the men's chances of being in the hunt for a trophy? Um, well, it didn't help when we took a um, – a little bit of a, a ding there in the uh, DMR. Um, they absolutely ran out of their minds there in Notre Dame for having 13 or 14 times come out of that meet. Uh, but I still like our men's chances. Um, our, our goal there is going to be to try to score between 25 and 30 points. And uh, if that gets us a trophy, we'll be through. Is uh, Barry better outdoors than indoors? Than just uh, the stride? I would think so. I would think so. Um, we don't really get a chance to run too much indoor track. And when I say we, I'm talking about people on the West Coast. Um, and so uh, up there at Washington, it's a little bit to his advantage because it's a 307 meter track. But then when you go to these national championship meets, uh, they condense that down and you get a 200 meter bank. So we try to prepare for stuff like that by taking the kids to as many bank tracks as possible. We went to one in Boise, we went to one in Arkansas. So that's really no, no excuse uh, for him not to do well 
Um, we just pre try to prepare them as, as best as possible going to these early season meets. And uh, we went to this uh, same venue earlier in the year, so uh, he's been there before. You mentioned um, uh, you're having to do more the peripheral stuff now as the head coach. Uh, how important it is for you to uh, really manage your time well? I mean, have you had to, to make some changes in how you operate? Absolutely. Uh, you definitely become more efficient. Um, I've, I've always been an early morning guy, an early morning philosophy type uh, for, for my team. Um, I think that just translates to some of the life skills that we're trying to impart and, and teach them. So uh, we have practice at uh, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, they go to class and then we come back at 2, uh, like today. So on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're, we're double days. And then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, we come back for the individual stuff. So with having said that, prioritizing your time is a lot and uh, uh, like I said you heard me talk about my, my operations people they filter a lot of that stuff uh, for me which which kind of really helps me stay stay grounded and coach the same events that I've always coached. Are the morning practices new this year? No. Have you been doing that all along? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know one of the things that I made sure that didn't change in, in transitioning to the, this new role is that still be able to put the time in with the team to keep them successful. This weekend you spoke about just kind of each person participating in their event and just doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. um, but is there any one specific event on men or women's side that's going to be really pivotal to the team standings overall? Uh, I think all the events are, are pivotal because um, we don't have a large number of, of kids participating. So, for example, there's there's nine men uh, qualifiers and there's 12, 12 women qualifiers. And so every event uh, that they run in, we need to be able to, to score some points. Laura was mentioning there's some girls on the team who don't know what it's like not to win an indoor national championship. <laughs> yeah. One, that's, that's pretty wild. Yeah. Does that help? I mean, is there a tangible benefit of having that kind of championship experience? You know, uh, Rihanna says this thing called shine bright like a diamond. Uh, and having said that, being in the pressure cooker of championship races and championship meets gives them a chance to uh, actually know and understand what it's like to, to be in those situations and to have so many of those girls uh, in that, that, to have that never lost a uh, indoor championship or never lost an outdoor, if we we're, were, were talking about just never, never losing. So I think they can impart that uh, wisdom and what it feels like on the younger kids. Um, there's some kids there, uh, Annie LeBlanc, um, Alexi Pappas, that don't have a, a lot of uh, indoor championship experience. So for them to be able to look to one of our, our senior leaders and be able to, to talk to them about what is it like, what would I expect, I think it's huge. English debuted and, and won the 60. <laughs> Were you expecting that from her? Um, actually, Eng English is a super, super talented kid. Um, you never, ever underestimate anything anything she does. And one of the things that I think is to her benefit is she, she's very strong-willed as well. So um, is it a surprise? Absolutely not. You know, she, she's the type of talent that any race that she's in, she has a chance. Did you expect her to, to defend her title now this weekend? Um, there's a lot of talented kids out there as well. Um, I think we were rounding, we're trending into into form now uh, with this being her third race uh, in, in the 60s, so uh, I like her chances. you see this as the most difficult uh, indoor meet of the past three or four? I do. I do. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be one of the ones that are, that are more challenged. I, I think there's just more teams that can score more points. Uh, usually there was one or two teams that could could score 40 or 40 plus points, but in uh, this meet coming up, I think there's going to be four or five teams that can get to 40 easily. What's the magic number? Uh, I think the magic number is 53. And where does that come from? I woke up one morning and said uh, 53 is the number. <laughs>